Okay, cool. Okay, just seeing what the lag is here. I got to make some adjustments. Being live here is kind of new. Okay, if you're tuning into this late, don't worry, you didn't miss much. Um, this is really just a test to see how this will work. And uh, everybody give me your feedback. Uh, how was the volume? How annoying was the dog barking next door in the background? Um, <coughs> very annoying to me, <coughs> but I'm going to try to give a video here, a little bit of something here to start with today. And... Uh, what we've got here is a build sheet that you're looking at here from a 1980 Monza and as evidenced uh, right in box one here by the C for Chevy as uh, I see here we have a P for Pontiac and somewhere down the list there'll be an O for Oldsmobile as you can see I have quite a few examples to compare notes there's some more Pontiac ones in the background okay now uh, one thing we can talk about right there if you just notice that some of the build sheets have a giant number here and some don't we'll talk about that in a minute because we're gonna start right here in box number one that's labeled uh, job sequence number I understand that's probably too blurry to see on your screen this uh, webcam here is old and about to be replaced but not quite yet so uh, please subscribe to this video if you'd like to see enhancements that would get this video looking uh, better if you haven't already subscribed okay so um, C36170888 is a number right here well what this number is is your job sequence number um, it's the basically the job and a job number was assigned to a body that I believe was built up and in a body bank and this number here at the end may have signified which bank so if you notice right here I'm covering up the last number and you just see three six one seven oh eight and that number will correspond always with the number in down the line in this box three six one seven zero eight and also 361708 here. This was your car's basic body number. This number counted up uh, each year how many bodies were made at the plant. Now right off the bat, if you notice that there were 361 is a lot greater than the amount of total H bodies that they made that year. Well, that's because this number uh, included vans that were made on the property but in a separate building. So, uh, this number originated um, from an order, a customer order. So, it was a job assigned to, that was going to be assigned to a body that may have been uh, stamped uh, at the time they received this uh, order or uh, would have been something that uh, had been built uh, for, you know, use you know, built as a blank shell to be assigned a number. As you know, that uh, there were more than one kind of uh, body style. So, you know, there would have been, a ver had to have been built a variety of bodies to uh, keep the line moving uh, with all the different variations. So, a couple of different uh, theories expound there, but uh, 
for basic intents and purposes, you always see the number here in the job sequence number, and the mystery here is then, therefore, this last number. Why was this last number there? It's always between 0 and 9. So it denoted, uh, it's never a double digit, at least as far as I've ever found. And if you've got a double digit uh, build sheet, let me know. Anyways, um, seemed to be there was 1 in 10 of something needed to be known here. Now, maybe these orders were built in batches of 10, perhaps, or um, it was uh, some kind of job sequence uh, when uh, to get stamped out, maybe... Uh, you know, maybe job sequence numbers could jumble around, but they needed to know uh, in a single file order, you know, what was 0 through 10 and run them through the uh, stamping uh, facilities. If you're following along with what I'm rum rambling about here, um, a car would have been, uh, could have possibly been uh, not built yet. And here arrives this order for 361708. It's going to be a Chevy. It's going to be, uh, and it's going to be, you know, everything else that it would need to be built as. Well, perhaps job number 361709 was a van occurring in the van plant. So over on the H body line, the numbers would have went. 361708, maybe uh, 361710 was back to an H body, 361713 and 18, and maybe they would have been running batches of 10 to uh, just keep them all organized, and that's uh, maybe all this department needed to know was which order of 10, run them through, and then build another 10 and another 10, but that's just a theory of a lot of different possibilities. Um, so anyways, um, just a small detail that's not exactly understood. Here you had C uh, for, you know, B, O, P, or C. For, I'm sure you understand that. If you're watching this video, you'll know uh, what that means. So Moving on down the top of the line here, there was some boxes labeled for a few things that were never used, ignition key and another uh, compartment key codes were not used there. We discussed this box. It's your body, basic body unit number. And then moving on to a VIN number area, which spelled out uh, what the car's VIN number would be based on uh, what it was ordered as a Chevy, a sport faced hatchback. This one was R for sport faced, 07 for the hatchback. And could have been an M for a plain Jane, but uh, we have uh, the A for the V6 engine, A for 1980, 7 for the Lordstown plant, and it's VIN code starting with 100,000. If this says 2, then this was the 100,000, 147,236th Monza made that year. If that seems pretty late in production, you would be right. This is a uh, late production, almost to the end of the normal production, 1980 uh, Monza. What I mean by normal production is in 1980, uh, there was an extension period uh, after the usual model year cutoff where uh, Monzas were built for uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, I believe three more months and the cutoff was found to be Thanksgiving of 1981. No, 1980, sorry. No. Uh, yeah, 1980. Anyways. Um, spring of 81 ushered in the... Uh, during the time, around December and January and February, the plant was ripped apart, retooled, and... All the H-body stuff was thrown in dumpsters around the plant and ushered in was all the J-body, front-wheel drive stuff that's uh, now long gone for the Cobalt and now the Cruise, where I recently took a tour of the plant and um, the, uh, um, the place had just been reconfigured again. So... 
for the new cruise, Chevy Cruise. Oh, but that car's another story. Back to um, this jazz here. This box will often have another code. Let's flip over some build sheets and find it. Right here we go. We have a, oh, look. Well, we don't want to use those codes. That's a still in existence car. We know whose car that is. Here's one. This particular car. Sorry about all that. We got a camera collapse. This particular car, 9746. Your car has a code right here. And. One with a zero at the end. Um, this particular code, 9746, uh, I found was wax crayoned on the rear bumper fascia of a few cars that I had. You know, the number that was on their build sheet was also wax crayoned on their license plate area, meaning that this was perhaps some sort of a shipping yard license number, you know, uh, just a way to track cars out in the shipping yard that apparently was no longer needed. By 1980, maybe there was a revision in how they shipped the cars, and uh, they didn't they didn't use it, no longer needed it, and uh, so some cars got it. Our 78, 79 had it. Um, I don't I don't I gotta check 79. I don't know if 79 had it or not. 79 did have it, and only 1980 is missing it. So that's how you can tell a 1980 build sheet if you find one is right off the bat. Does it have the code there or not? May have been a key code. It seemed like if it was written in the wax crayon area of the light of the rear of the car, either they were just trying to. Uh, it was a way that they uh, painted that part and matched it up to the rest of the car, and then maybe they. Uh, you know, lots of hypotheses here, and I won't just ramble on about. Things I think that I'm not sure of yet, just giving you an idea that some of these things um, are uh, known and some are not. Some of these boxes are labeled properly for the things that are the code that's contained in them, and some are not. Uh, for example, moving on here, we have axle. And box 11 axle is usually lists the axle code, this one here being 2EB, A. 256 axle uh, that was not posi traction. And uh, that code probably corresponds to that. Now uh, it'll always have a dot dot 80. So it appears to me that this code is connected to the rear axle code. But I've never been able to confirm what this means. And what I mean by never being able to confirm it. It's not something I did by just sitting here and hypothesizing. I organized all build sheets I had from all different years over which ones had 80, which ones had 81, which ones had code 82, and one of them has a code 181, a very, you know, just a total oddball right there. And on some of these codes, I did that, and I was able to find out, oh, okay, this code is for air, um, air conditioning or glove box doors, whatever it was. You would be able to see, like, these cars had this, these cars had that. And I could find no identifying thing here. I thought it would be a sport suspension thing where uh, the trailing arms that were being put on, w maybe uh, to mount the rear axle, were either... Uh, Uh, code for you know put the inserts in don't put the inserts in but it didn't it it wouldn't line up I had all different codes under all different suspensions so um, at another point I was reading in my um, assembly manuals where they needed to adjust the cross members uh, when they put the cross member on the car there was a selection of different cross members they could use for different frame 
tolerances. I'm not sure about this, but I vaguely recall reading this in my assembly manuals, and I thought at that time it rang a bell and corresponded with this number, so maybe they were putting on um, the cross member underneath the, uh, near the K-member in the front of the car, and the car's got a certain K-member. This could have also been the transmission cross member, for all we know. It was something to do with the axle, the uh, probably the torque arm, and on and on and on. Okay, so moving on here. Probably this this is probably axle and then torque arm is what I would imagine. Here we have uh, a code that um, you always find 16 and 15 here where it lists control arm, but 80 has something peculiar here. 80 always has a color in this spot, and earlier build sheets don't have the color. They'll just list 16 and 15. 16 and 15 and what this corresponds with if you got a 16 and 15 you have a sport model car would add that had the uh, control arms that had the mount for the sway bar and I believe a 60 and a 59 did not have the sway bar mounts like for example a 60 and a for some reason they had uh, different control arms anyways um 79 always lists the color, they're silver. This always had something to do with the exterior color of the car. And for some reason, something around, uh, you know, in the frame section needed to be painted the same color as the car at, uh, in 1980. Moving on down the line here, we've got your uh, rear control arms. As you see, there was always a standard. When you see a dot, there's just a standard procedure happening there. And AOR uh, here is a code for uh, the front springs. And the box lists front springs. And indeed, that has the code for the front springs, AOR, AOS on and on HT HD sometimes you'll see uh you could get a heavy duty suspension with some time or no if you got the full size spare tire you'd see a different spring listed on the left than on the right um one of my cars one of my build sheets has that otherwise it'll have the two similar shock codes right here and moving on down the line the camera wasn't right you had the rear springs here here you have your some other codes here, steering knuckle code. And it gets a little questionable here. This does denote the sway bars right here, the stabilizer bars, whether it got a uh, standard no stabilizer bar in the rear and maybe a small stabilizer bar in the front. And then this is a cross member, so maybe this was indeed the cross member. There's a couple, there's some variations on these codes that occur throughout the build sheets. And, you know, moving on from there, the rest is a little easier to, to decode. You know, you got your, uh, here's this, these brackets here denote like a different part of the plant. This is where they uh, assembled more of your uh, powertrain, drivetrain going in. The bottom section is, as you can probably tell by all the boxes, is more of your interior codes and the rest of the little trim items that made your car your car. You know, hanging the mirrors on and putting the, the trim, final trim on. And a couple of uh, interesting codes here. There's a, I've seen some variations on this code and it's not known what it was. There's this number always is a different number. It's not known what that was. Um, other codes like this are obviously uh, going to correspond with the color of your interior. And their interior stuff. And moving on here, there is a box right here that has uh, some coolness to it. Hydro Pierce is the last box we'll talk about today. Hydro Pierce will... If your car did not have any decals, we'll usually have a basically a standard, nope, send it on through code, no procedure. However, if your car did get some codes, you've got 
For example, here is a Monza Spider with a black and gold decal set, and that's what's listed there. If I can find a Formula Sunbird, here is a 1980 Monza with the uh, blue decals, so it'll just list blue. There's a spider, a black spider that had uh, gold and white decals. That would be the gold striping with the white lettering. And so what you'd find on the doors of a black spider. Okay, this should have it right here. Ooh, hard to see, but see the PF3 right there? That is Pontiac Formula uh, co the striping number three, which would have been was a white car, and I believe it had gold accents. Indeed. Well, okay, that's all for today. Codes on this Formula Sunbird, which was a, if you look right here, U8U. This was a Formula Sunbird with a V8 in 1978. A pretty rare bird right here. Not many of these were made. And it was a V8, you can see right here, the V8 5 liter, the 308 axle, the 4 speed manual transmission, the uh, sport wheels. Didn't have snowflakes. These were the uh, rallies. I would have got snowflakes, but uh, well maybe those were snowflakes. I, I don't know if this model, this one particular one, had them or not. It may have. Um, and otherwise, uh, just pretty standard everywhere. And as you can see, another code you'll find on these build sheets is that uh, whether it was a customer order or a dealer order, dealer order says nothing, and the customer order will have XXX customer order, apparently for all the hot chicks that ordered these cars, huh? And um, sometimes wax crayon on some of the build sheets. This was usually your door. Your door build sheet would usually have wax crayon on it. Before, here in 1980, 28, wax crayon, this one. Okay, so enough about, um, <coughs> excuse me, enough about build sheets, a little bit about trim tags here. 1980, this one is maybe a little hard to see, but, um, well, actually, let's start earlier. Here is an example of an early uh, New to Lordstown 78. Actually, this would be mid production right here. Uh, Chevy uh, Monza trim tag. And this one as well might be a little bit of an easier example to see. What to know? Here's what the, d the deal is. You'll see. ST doesn't, that's just a standard Build Street stamp. Um, it stood for s style. But anyways, they put the year first. 78 is right here, the year. The uh, make, 2 for Pontiac. HM, this used a H for H body, where the VIN would omit that, but H for H body. Then the M07 was used for this one. That means it was a hatchback and a standard or uh, maybe a sporty or Pontiac uh, Sunbird. Uh, this is the uh, plant code, and this is the body unit number. As right next to where it says body, and then it's the interior codes. Every they all said A51 because they all had bucket seats. That's a standard GM code for Area 51, where aliens uh, were. Uh, making cars. No, um, they're a bucket seat code. And then, but it uh, sure helped to add to the mystique when you tried to look at the codes and you know, we were like, whoa, 851, oh my gosh. 
split swap of this car. 15L, 15U, this was a silver car, as evidenced by the trim tag here. Same color as the car. They used a lower and an upper code, but all no monsters had two tones, so uh, they were always 15 lower, 15 o upper. Well, they did have some Buick have a two tone at one time in 1980? I don't think so, but it's perhaps. Um, 09D, here is a uh, a date code, and uh, since production started in on in August, an 09 would have to be an early production car. It's the only time 09 would show up because the first code would say 08. So as you can see, this is the second month in, and they started late in the month. So the first month was 08D. This is 09D. About a month in, they worked about 20 days a month. And what do you know? This was the fourth day in from the first month because there's your first 20 days. Maybe it was exactly on the day of starting because of there was about 20 to 24 days. If they worked some Saturdays, and there's evidence uh, from the build sheet dates that they did work Saturdays from time to time. But it was generally Monday through Friday, two shifts, uh, eight hours apiece. And uh, this would denote just one simple day of two eight-hour shifts. Counted up every single day. So day one started with a one, and or maybe started with zero zero, perhaps. It probably started with a one. And on and on. Um, so, this number here was the, we skipped over uh, 74X and interior code goes along with the uh, other interior code here. This was like your seats color and this was your interior like carpet color. Or what was known as the big four. Which would have been your rear load floor carpet, your main carpet, your kick panels and dashboard and probably the console color too. Uh, so uh, this four digit number after the uh, day built code, by the way it would click up, you know they'd go to 124 days then 224 days but they didn't need to know that. This just needed to separate the 23rd day from the 25th day should this car have been built toward the morning or evening of any given day. And 0278 was the position in line. This did not count up um, from zero every day. It was just a continuous uh, 9999 code back to zero, uh, counting up the uh, positions. And for getting parts to these cars, uh, they would arrive. You know, uh, this was its order in line, and this is where parts would be designated all to arrive. So yellow matched up with yellow, and silver matched up with silver, and on and on. Here is the car's uh, eventual VIN number, and a special code here. This is where the car got special codes for, uh, you know, trim trim stuff. And uh, if you had a spider, it would say O2 black or O2 gold if you had the gold striping and this one said 98 black this was a sunbird with a somewhat of a sporty uh, striping package or some option package 90 what was that 90 yes 98 black so then probably RPO D98 and uh, was given black striping so from there we have this code right here, and this is what I uh, want to bring your attention to. Uh, this is a conformity code, and it reads, it reads, you won't be able to read it, but I'll read it here. It says, General Motors Corporation certifies to the dealer that this vehicle conforms to all U.S. federal motor vehicle safety standards applicable at time of manufacture and they just needed basically to legally stamp that on the car so you could be assured that this was built to comply with all safety features well all of a sudden later in 1978 the code disappears this is 79 trim tag as you see 79 doesn't have it anymore 80 doesn't use it anymore and 
sometime. Here's the 78 tag from a little later down the line in June, and it doesn't have it. I have a cutoff date. At the end of May, I still have the statement. So I'm just trying to find out what week before or after May 22nd and before June, the third week in June, when was this cut off? I'd like to know, I'd like to have a build sheet from, or I mean a trim tag from uh, a day, like day 99 to zero zero, where you know, one has it and one doesn't, just to verify uh, what day um, that code disappeared. Just a little, somewhat of a mystery there. Hey look, this one has a, uh, another 98 in white, and uh, this had the same striping package on another Sunbird uh, lot. Uh, a little down the line, uh, blue with white, that uh, probably would have looked pretty sharp. What would you have chosen? Silver with black or blue with white? Um, so, moving into 79, some things were changed around. Let's compare it directly to a 78. <coughs> Oh, here's another thing that changed on these. I just noticed. Look at that. Okay, they got a lot simpler. They also took away the the uh, ST, the body, the paint. Apparently, they didn't need to know any of that stuff anymore either. Everybody knew what the hell the codes were, so. We have here versus 79er here. So, 79, the year was still first, but shifted over a little bit. Um, the date code was next. Uh, the date code was near the rivet. They probably got tired of having the date code get cut up by the rivet, or maybe they realized they had to have tracking problems, so they put it up near here. Okay. Then we still have uh, your body information. The plant. Oh, the plan is still listed here with a 7. And then you have 167.773 as this body unit number. It was listed all together. Okay, moving on down the line here, you can see that. The second line remained the same. And... Um, <coughs> Sometimes it could have another code here. Even a 78 could have another code there. If there was, I believe, L was something like if you got a sunroof, you'd have a code right here. This was a code for a factory sunroof. Something to do, anything to do with the roof. It had to be, you know, someone on the... This whole trim tag was for the metal side of the plant. Then everything changed to a build sheet once the car was painted. They just need this thing to get the car from its uh, metal shell stage through the paint booths. So, that was different, that was different. And then finally, uh, your seat code was moved down here, 851. That could get crushed up by the, by the rivet. That was a pretty redundant code. This one had a couple of uh, dots, then an O2, and this O2 is because this was a Z02 spider. So there you know, go. You do have abilities to find out if a Monza was a real spider or not, based on that code. <coughs> so what about the important uh, tracking code? Well, that went to the bottom here. This was built on day uh, 01C. Yeah, that was probably built on day 95 at uh, spot 7460. And as you can see, the special code area was just moved up over to here. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I'll leave you guys with that. If you have any questions now that you've seen this video, uh, 
leave them in the comment section, or I don't know how the hell to do this. Uh, just leave them on the the uh, H Body Facebook page where I linked this video to originally. And uh, hey, look, a uh, really rare green color from '78. And to leave you, uh, well, not leave you hanging on 1980 here. Uh, 1980 was a whole different animal. Lots of changes happening at the plant, uh, modernizing as it went, getting ready for the 80s here. Uh, the the trim tag's a whole different animal. It's a different material altogether. It's a very, very, very plastic-like metal. It's it's like you can you know, see it's. I guess it's metal, but it's very thin and doesn't have a ridge at the top it's not cut with a fancy little corner cut there in a ridge no more time for messing around making trim tags look cute it, they just use a credit card piece of steel stamped out and it had uh, some more uh, robust computerized looking letter so it must have been a whole new machine uh, A what did this one have? Uh, it had A for 1980 07B the month and year with another date code like 79 the body style the plant code and the perhaps the body unit number okay then the uh, interior exterior paint codes uh, this one I believe did have a sunroof and what do you know there's the L code again so this L code was pretty sure in the same old spot and still for a sunroof car had bucket seats that's all they needed to know in 1980 ex with uh, still using the exact same trim tag or uh, tracking I mean uh, code that we discussed earlier stamped down in the lower corner this was built on day 14 was that let's see 07 B that would have been day 214 I believe um, yeah late production here late 1982 14 I believe this was the same as uh, this was from uh, the build sheet we looked at a few minutes ago and built at spot 4428 so uh, there's your uh, how to read trim tags of a late model uh, Monza Sunbird built at Lordstown and some interesting stuff about the build sheets and some questions about things that are not yet known so if you have a build sheet or a trim tag, especially a trim tag from the 1978 model year, definitely post it, definitely send it my way if you're worried about the information that's listed on it for any reason, uh, you know, whatever, uh, just uh, just uh, PM it to me or ask for an email, I'll definitely uh, provide you somewhere to send it. So, uh, okay, have a great day. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like this video, once again, click subscribe below.